Welcome to Game Crunch, your weekly video game podcast. My name is Mike Anastasia. With me tonight, we have Nick. Hello. And Brandon. Oh. Ah. <laughs> 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 and we're going to talk about games and things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Game of the year. Right. Not really game of the year. Fake game of the year. Game of the year in July. This is all the yeah. year. Oh, it's game August. Year. August game of the year. Yeah. This episode's coming out in August. But, yeah, so we're going to talk about... Yeah, so we're talking about our favorite games of this year. Yep, thus far, mm-hmm. and then what we're anticipating for the rest of the year. And yeah, you guys ready to get into it? Sure. Yeah. All right. This is what I'm thinking. I think this is All how right. we'll do it. All right. Uh, we'll just go round robin and throw out some games that we play this year that released this year that would be eligible for game of the year stuff. Okay. And talk about what we like about it. If anyone has some like extra stuff to add on there, we can do that too. And then we'll go to the next person. That I have a good for those. Yeah. Can I cheat and have a game that released December 17th of last year? Would it be eligible for game of the year? That's what I'm asking. Why would it be eligible for game of the year? Why wouldn't it? We quite literally like Did you okay. talk about it last year? No, absolutely not. Didn't yeah. even it it wasn't even fully like released. Like there's, it's an early access still, but there wasn't enough features in it when it first released that, so much so that it wasn't even on my radar. It wasn't on anyone's radar until this year. Okay, that's fair. I mean, I guess you could talk about it. We can debate Ellie. It's not on console, later. so you know. Yeah, there's that too. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah we can talk about. It. Yeah, sure. Brett, you can talk. You can talk. Yeah, you can talk about it, Brandon. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess I'm going to talk about it then. I didn't know we were getting right into it. It's yeah, vampire survivors. It's it's Boy. vampire survivors. Fuck you. No, it's this is this is one of the best games I've played all year. Easily. Uh, I've spent about 31 hours in this game. I keep going back to it. They keep releasing updates. There's so many characters now. There's always something new to do. Uh, I mean, I've almost got all the achievements, and I'm, like, still playing this game. Just because it's that fucking good. So, um, for those that don't know what Vampire Survivors is, it's a, it's a game where you auto-attack while moving. And it's all about creating synergy between your um, items. And uh, as you level up your character, you are able to select a ability. And you can hold, I believe, six abilities at a time. And different abilities play off of each other. And, like, your first runs, you're not going to do that well because you haven't upgraded your character enough. But, you know, it's one of those games where it's like, ah, one more game, Uh, one more game, one more game. And the entire point of the game is to survive 30 minutes while you're continuously being onslaughted by all these enemies. And, like, you have to find the right patterns to get around enemies, and you have to find the right weapons, and you need to defeat the right enemies at the right time so that you can get, like, treasure chest and upgrade your character with, like, more powerful weapons and stuff like that. And just, this game is a fucking blast to play. And honestly, this is the game I've played the most on my Steam Deck, Mm -hmm. and probably the most on my PC as well, uh, out of any game this year. So... Yeah, uh, this game's just excellent. It's two ninety nine. It is, it is a freaking steal at the price that it is, and like it's not got any microtransactions or any of that shit. It's just so much fun to play, and I highly recommend anyone try it if you haven't yet. There's a reason why it has over a hundred thousand reviews and is still rated at overwhelmingly positive. So there you go. That's good. Okay. That, that that's one of my games. <laughs> that's one of your games all right let me, one. let me pull up my list okay he has a list he does have oh, a i list. told you guys i always take a list of the games that i play each year so i can see what i've played um i will start with i'll just go down my list in order that they've come out uh pokemon legends arceus that's a good game that's a very yeah. good game a hot game from january january yeah. is usually a ship month Mm-hmm. And uh, and this one too. I remember even last year, this was kind of like our wild card game because we still didn't know anything about it. Even in, like when we were doing game of the year, which we actually recorded in January, so it's like the game was like weeks away from coming out, and we're like, we don't know what the fuck this game is. Maybe it's gonna be good. Maybe it won't be good. And I think it ended up wildly surpassing everyone's expectations. So, um. I thought it was excellent. I really like what they did with the formula. Um, I think they did a lot of nice quality of life stuff for Pokemon. Um, 
and I just love the way that you got to like explore the worlds and go around. Like I think it's a real step in the right direction for that series. Okay. It'll be interesting to see what they end up carrying over into Violet and Scarlet. Because uh, at least if the rumors are to believe, a, a lot of the features are coming over, um, such as uh, like evolve when you want, not like the automatic evolve kind of stuff anymore, or being able to change moves just kind of like in the menus instead of having to, you know, take them somewhere special to do that. Um, so it'll be interesting to see like what they do. I still hope the overworld catchings in the game. Um, that is one of my favorite things that they've probably ever added to pokemon mm. but uh yeah i mean i just I, I think it's 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 the most like real look into the world of pokemon that we've ever had um you just get to see them interact differently you get to see uh just kind of like explore around and have fun and you know the pokemon are all doing like wild stuff and and you have they're trying to hunt you down and i don't know there's the alpha pokemon that'll just pop up out of nowhere and beat the shit out of you it's just wild game. I don't know. I had a great time with it. I really liked it. I, I actually, I think I told you guys. I actually played through it twice already this year. I had such a good time with it. Wow. Uh, I know. Um, so it's definitely it's pretty high up on on the list of stuff that I played this year. And like I said, I really hope that a lot of stuff that they built into this game that made it interesting uh, gets pulled into the future of the series. If not with Scarlet and Violet. Um, I at least would love to see like a direct sequel to this game, like you know another Pokemon Legends, mm-hmm. uh, maybe with a different region. So I don't know. That, that's kind of my hopes on it. I know you both played this one. Yeah. And, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys had anything else to add on to it, but yeah. I no, I mean it just it's excellent. Yeah. Yeah. At the end of the day, it, it's so good. I was going to say, uh, the, the unfortunate thing is that you took basically the first one I was going to talk about. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, you definitely did. Um, but if you're smart, you got your your second one is probably going to be my, or your first one's probably going to be my, my second one was going to be. We'll see. No, actually. Probably my not. second one is going to be not one that either you have picked. I'm positive um, of it. But just to add on to the, the RCS talk, I do really, really love that game. Um, for what it is, like it, it definitely changed or it gave a fresh take on like a series that I honestly I was getting tired of. I was getting mm. tired of playing a lot of the Pokemon games, um, especially some of the latter 3DS ones that they made. Yeah. Um, and then Sword and Shield was okay, but then Arceus came out, and I was like, "Fuck yeah, this is great! I like this." A lot. Yeah, Sword and Shield's fine. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, I think that's the issue with it though. It's fine. Like Pokemon has been stagnant's not the right word but it's like they've been looking for something to kind of like rejuvenate the series for a yeah. while I feel like mm-hmm. and this really just it took it in the direction that I think it needed to go granted like I, the biggest complaint people have is like you know the competitive like the game is not competitive ready because of the changes to the battle system yeah. so obviously you, you would have to make some tweaks if you were gonna you know use a lot of these mechanics for Scarlet and Violet. Like, you would have to kind of go back to the old battle system, which is fine. The old battle system, I think, I think is functional, but mm-hmm. you really just needed some new life in the series, and this really just... Like, there's some old tropes that they've just been holding on to since basically the beginning, and this one was just like, no, fuck it. We're just gonna do whatever we want. Nothing is sacred. Yeah, we're just gonna rock out. Yeah, and they did, and I think they just... They really nailed it. And I think it... Um, exceeded everyone's expectations because I don't think anyone really expected such a deviation from the core formula to be so nah. enjoyable. Uh-huh. So. Um, but yeah, so that was that was going to be my first one. Uh, but I can talk about another game that I really liked. Yeah. Um, and that was uh, TMNT: Shredder's Revenge. That game's oh, so one. good. That game fucks. That game That's, absolutely yeah. fucks. That game is phenomenal. Um, I almost 100 percent of that game in one sitting because it was just so fucking good. That yeah, no, it's it's definitely like everything I wanted it to be and more. The soundtrack's mm-hmm. amazing. Um, it reminds me a lot of some of the older like Super Nintendo slash arcade TMNT games mm-hmm. in like a good way. Um, like it's 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 a perf it's that perfect mix of retro and new that I feel like 
a lot of people try and do and not a lot succeed at it. But when it is mm -hmm. successful, like in this case, it just it fires on all cylinders and just never has a low point and just it just keeps hitting. So um, I do have a physical copy of this pre-ordered because I want it physically. Um, but I got it through Game Pass and I played it through there. So like if you have Game Pass, like go play it. Listen to this first, but then go play that. So, yeah, it does have great music. All right, Brandon. Yeah, back to uh, you. Yeah, my next pick is Neon White. It's Neon White. Yeah, yeah, Neon White is excellent. So this is a speed running first person shooter that uses a card battling system, but doesn't at the same time. Essentially, there are cards that are located around the arenas, and every single mission that you do is a different arena that you have to speed through and kill kill all the demons that are there, and then also um, get to the finish line. And uh, there's so many different elements to this game that make it uh, interesting, uh, such as the ability to discard cards, which give you power. So, for instance, you discard the uh, pistol card, you get a double jump ability, so you jump once, discard a pistol card, jump again, discard a pistol card, and you can continue continuously do that to keep yourself in the air and that allows you to reach like really tall heights in the map and whatnot and it, it's the game's like a puzzle first person shooter and it's just so much fun to play the dialogue is absolutely atrocious and awful but it's hilariously bad it's that special kind of bad you get to listen to um fucking uh steve blum or spike from cowboy bebop be edgy as fuck and everyone else around him be that as well and it's it's pretty fucking good mm -hmm. uh, i just cannot say enough good things about this game the variety of weapons and abilities it's just it's chef's kiss it's one of those games where it's like i will spend 20 30 tries trying to redo it just so i can get that nice like top tier metal to advance further into the story and it's just so good just because i want to or like i want to find the way to get the present to give a gift to someone to expand the dialogue tree and go further along or unlock their special stages and you want to do that because it's just mm -hmm. that fun of a game so that is my second choice easily all right well my second choice will be kirby and the forgotten lands mm -hmm. that's a good game i it played some game. of that yeah I, of I was really impressed did either of you end up finishing it i know nick got close oh, absolutely not because I, I gave it back to the person who owned it <laughs> i think i did or i'm just about like on the the precipice of doing so yeah i remember we talked about it last you were like on the precipice yeah mm -hmm. uh because you had like one more world to go. Yes, I just don't think we ever right. talked about it after that. Uh, but no, it is an excellent game. I mean, I think uh, for them to do a 3D Kirby, I think they really just kind of nailed everything they needed to do. Like it translated really well into a 3D game, um, which you would hope would be the case. But as we have seen time and time again, that is mm -hmm. not always the case. Uh, but I, I think it's how would I put this? It just it just functions as well as it did as a 2D game as a 3D game, which is mm -hmm. exactly what you want. The power ups are a lot of fun. Um, you know, the mechanics going back and finding the hidden items I think works really well. Um, I was just I was really happy with the whole package. It just just was a lot of fun. It was just a very mm -hmm. enjoyable Kirby game. Uh, and I don't know, they just hit all the right notes for me, so I was pretty happy with it. Okay, mm -hmm. me, yeah. How many games are we going to choose? I need to know that before I give more opinions. <laughs> I only have four. So I was gonna say, I'm, I'm, I'm also scraping the barrel a little bit. Um, <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Because my, the next one I'm going to talk about is going to be actually kind of funny. Um, and I don't before, think either of you let's have just do, any let's just do four. Let's just yeah, do four, four then. I feel like, enough, yeah, there's not a lot of like huge, huge things that have, I feel like, released yet this year that we have not played yet some of the ones that i've been actually looking forward to are like i'm getting into that season of like all right the first couple of the things that i was looking forward to are starting to release mm -hmm. um but the tmnt I was, was one of the first games i was yeah. looking forward to so i was i uh i also was going to talk that. about kirby and the forgotten lands mm -hmm. um because i think as mike said it is a very good game um but one that's kind of like a joke but like also not a joke is like 
the playable version of Cyberpunk that we got this year. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, um, that will not be in my actual overall... I mean, actually, it might be in the overall Game of the Year talks, just in case we do our most improved category, maybe. Mm. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, I would put that in there. I'm not sure how far that would necessarily get. But I will say it is great to finally be able to play a version of that game that is as close to at least what they wanted on release that we got. And, like, I have been spending time just just playing it here and there and, like, just exploring the whole world and actually seeing for it for what it was supposed to be, at least in in some concepts and ideas. Mm -hmm. So um, it was good to finally at least get some sort of closure with that game, in, in a sense. So, yeah. Okay. Back to you, Brandon. Okay. Uh, so this is three for me, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, so the third game is going to be Nobody Saves the World. This game is so much fun. This one I did 100%. I did multiple streams of this game, played all the way through it. Um, this game's awesome. So this is created by the people that made... Um, oh, goodness. Oh, fuck. My brain just stopped working. Brain it's the Luchador game. Oh, uh, Guacamelee? Guacamelee. This is a Guacamelee devs. This is their game. And okay. also, um, I believe the Bleed dev uh, worked on this as well. And this game's awesome. It is a lot of fun. It reminds me of things like uh, Banjo-Kazooie, where you could turn it into many different things uh, to like solve puzzles and go further in the game and whatnot, and as you like continued along in Banjo Kazooie, you got more unlocks and you be- had like more different things you changed to like ants and shit like that and whatnot. Um and this game has a very unique gameplay style where it's top down like RPG uh kind of thing, similar to like a Legend of Zelda, um like the Link to the Past, that sort of deal. Um but the your abilities don't come from weapons your abilities come from the characters you interact with and the things you unlock so you'll unlock things like a mouse and the mouse has the ability to bite but later on you can mix it with another character and when you mix and match those abilities you can do things like create a poisonous bite or a bite that like takes help from enemies and then you have to do all of that and mix and match the different abilities to solve puzzles and finish the game in general and it's a ton of fun like uh, you eventually get characters that can like fly and swim and stuff and it allows you to meet reach uh further than you were able to in the game in the past and uh there's like one character that's just an egg and then the entire point of that character is to travel to the different um nest that are hidden throughout the map and plant the egg there so they can be sat on and hatched. And then when you hatch it, it becomes another character. And I'm not going to reveal what that character is because that's one of the best characters in the Uh-oh. game, in my opinion. And it's super cool and it's awesome and you should definitely do it. Just in general, give this game a try. It's on Game Pass. It's a lot of fun. It's very silly. It's funny. Uh, and like all the characters that are there have like a lot of personality. It's just a very good game. So there you go. It took me 36 hours to finish the entire game. 100%. So, That's it's also got a lot of content. Yeah. All right. uh, my next one is kind of an old new game. Okay. Uh, Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. Awesome. It's coming yeah. back, boys. It's coming back. Let's go. <laughs> I fought uh, for I'm... this game in 2017. Let's fucking go. <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoyed this playing through it. Um, I know there's a lot of neat stuff. Did you end up playing Elder Dux? Cause you, I have not. I have not game? bought it yet. I have not been able to buy it yet. No. Yeah. No, it's it's pretty neat. All the stuff that's in there, and I mean, at least from what I've seen, it seems like there's a decent amount of new stuff compared to the original. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I think it's fair calling a new release. There's a lot of content there. Um. No, I think it is too. From every everyone I've heard from, like, there's enough content here to make a whole nother game, practically. Oh yeah, I mean, it kind of teases itself as like the sequel, anyways. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, it's it's super original. It's very charming. Like, there's lots of interesting stuff going on there. Um, and it just sounds like too. There's just always like new stuff that's just so tucked away that just your average person 
probably would never find it. And some people are just tearing the game to shreds. They're just like, mm-hmm. oh, here it is. Um, so yeah, no, there's just like I said, it just it's a lot of fun. Just the way it just kind of, I don't know. It reminds me of a a little bit of um, what was that game or that movie, the TV show that I liked, like Russian Dolls, kind of like where mm. it builds off of like each of the deaths and like the time mechanic stuff and um you know a little bit of like severance maybe mm-hmm. um just kind of that tv show i also think kind of if these those two tv shows i got, had a baby, I got an apple tv so i can watch that now oh good Fine, yeah i got it for free the six months free trial thing i i signed up for it on the last day mm-hmm. oh good i got i got a list of things for you to watch brandon you gotta Sounds watch good. severance mm-hmm. you gotta watch mythic quest I already know about the Mythic Quest, yeah. Yeah, I know, I know. Mythic Quest, they just announced the, the third season. It's supposed okay. to come out it's either next month or September. So it's really soon. Definitely within the six months Okay, that you got. So you got that. Those ones, those two are like definites. Mm-hmm. Um, Ted Lasso, amazing. Okay. Um, probably one of the best TV shows I've ever watched. Um, do you like, like sci-fi stuff? Yeah. Okay. Um, For All Mankind absolutely and the show just keeps ratcheting up like i don't even this show is like the third season's on now and Mm -hmm. i swear to god every episode just ends with like a fucking season ending like moment where you're just like you know how like they like end seasons and they like really climactic things Mm -hmm. it's like every episode this season and i'm like what the fuck (laughs) it's like I'm like, is this the end of the season? They're like, no, there's four more episodes left. It's like, oh my god. <laughs> so yeah, no, I mean that one's really good too. I honestly, I've not watched a show on there that I've really been disappointed with. Okay, so far, like there's just it's a lot of quality stuff. So just check out what's there. But I would say off the top of my head, those four are good. Uh, like the must watch stuff that's on there okay. for sure. Yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I, I'm i going to say this right now because I wanted to make this joke ever since you started talking about the Stanley Parable. Mm-hmm. I can't wait until 2025 when you nominate Inscription as well as World of Horror for uh, Game of the Year. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think Inscription comes out on like console this year, doesn't it? Yes. Or yes. Next year? At least for so. sure, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, maybe it'll be this year that you end up nominating Inscription for Game of the Year. Who knows? Maybe. It could be. Um... Because it yeah. always seems like I recommend something, and uh, I have to fight for it very, very hard. And then when it actually comes out, and one of you guys can play it, you're like, "Yeah, you you shouldn't have had to fight for that one. This is fucking excellent." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and, I always understand the formula. No, no, I understand the formula. I, I understand it completely, and I'm not well, mad. You know what? I just find it really funny because, like, just I love. Brandon. You're gonna tell me no to Stanley Parable? Is that what you're gonna I'm, do now? I'm rescinding my endorsement <laughs> of Stanley Parable. He's <laughs> also gonna talk about Slay the Spire this year too. <laughs> she just fucking hell. Yeah. No, that's uh, fine. You can rescind it, but you know it's a good game, and you just admitted it. So whatever. Oh no, it's fantastic. I talked about it before too. It's great. Yep. 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 So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that no, the uh, the voiceover announcer guy they have is just so perfect. His dry humor is fucking hilarious. Oh and, yeah! Like this was your first time playing it, so did you get the fucking closet ending <laughs> out of curiosity? That's one of my favorite endings <laughs> in the game, the original game at least. Which one was it? I went through all the endings. The only, where, the only one I didn't it's where do is just gonna stand inside of the closet. They continuously makes fun of you, like. I don't know why you're still here. There's there's plenty oh, to do yes, outside. Yes, yes. What are you exactly doing here? And then eventually about. he's just like, it's maybe you're still here because you've actually died. Maybe the person that's on the other side of this controller has actually died. <laughs> excuse me, excuse me, sir, madam. If anyone is nearby, the person who has recently died, can you please pick up the controller? Preferably someone who knows hand-eye coordination and, ex- and it, at least the ability to play FPS games. That stands for per- first-person games. <laughs> and he just, like, <laughs> goes into the whole spiel about it, trying to explain it. <laughs> Yeah, some it's, of the endings are just so excellent. It's so excellent. fucking good. <laughs> the only ending I didn't do is the one where you have to like play that game for like hours. the baby one, stop yeah. him from going in the fire. Yeah, fuck that shit. I was like, I don't have time for this ever, mm-hmm. never ever. I'm like, I'm not gonna do this. I don't care. The ending doesn't even look that great. 
Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so that one I was just like, I noped right out of. But yeah. everything else I went through, at least all the known ones at the time, like I said, I'm sure that more have been dug up probably since then. Because mm-hmm. um, I think I got it with like a day or two with it coming out. So people were still readily exploring it. Oh, um, nice. But yeah, no, it's just wild because it's they also have that thing too, like the bucket. And if you get the bucket, then it changes all the original endings. So like you still get them the same way, but they're just fundamentally different. Um, which is it's just it's very comical the way it plays out. So um, yeah, no, I, I highly recommend it. There's something there for everyone for sure. Mm. Yes, mm-hmm. definitely. Yeah, it's fucking great. Except for me, I've rescinded my endorsement. <laughs> of the game. Uh, all right. I guess it's it's back to you, Nick. Um, can I add one that like disappointed me? Sure. Yeah, fuck it. This is game of the year stuff. Whatever. Fucking Chrono Cross disappointed me this year, boys. Of course it did. What? Yeah. However, could that have disappointed you? I'm because uh, it I'm ran like shocked. fucking dog shit. But you know, I never got better. Yeah, they did nothing to it to make it better. I was I was actually really upset too because like. I was looking forward to playing it, and like, I have it on disc. Mm-hmm. But like, who who feels like hooking up their PlayStation One or Three that can play one game? It's not me. I don't. Yeah, exactly. So, why do you think I rebuy so much shit I already own? It's just you know convenience. Exactly. So nice. Yeah, that one really, really disappointed me. Um, but also just kind of goes hand in hand with. I think we talked about this the last time. With uh, Square Enix and like ruining shit, so I mean, like, it's very on brand for them, sure, but uh, it made mm-hmm. me upset. So Square Enix is just not very good at doing anything lately. Yeah. No. And in other news, I actually really liked the Square Enix version of uh, Final Fantasy VII remake for PC. But other than that, uh, it seems a lot of things they've been putting out has been pretty shit. I feel like if they did put out a bad Final Fantasy, like that would be their death. That would just that would just be it. It'd be over. Oh yeah, <laughs> hands down. They're not they're not coming back from a bad Final Fantasy. Mm-hmm. Not yeah. this day and age, anyway. No, is it my turn now? Yeah, that wasn't really a game that you you, you uh okay. I mean, I, honestly, I haven't played much of anything else and the things that I did play. Uh, mm-hmm. Mike ruined now, but uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So. I mean, I guess my last one, which is like I saved it for last on purpose, it's because it's easily the best, is it, it's Elden Ring. Elden Ring is absolutely one of the best games I've played this year. It never got stale. It was so much fun. And honestly... Like I said before, the ability to just be able to take a step back and go somewhere else added so much to the FromSoft formula and the Dark Souls formula in general that it was like a whole nother level of like, you know, FromSoft Soulsborne kind of gaming. And it's just, there's literally nothing bad I could say about the game. Yeah, there was some issues initially when it first launched and the PC version was a little bit shaky and everything, but what fucking isn't in this day and age? And also it it was fixed rather quickly and it it was still entirely playable and just a ton of fun. I, I just cannot recommend it enough. Like, even if you are not a fan of Soulsborne games... If you looked at this and you were even like, that kind of looks interesting, you should play it. You should just play it. Like, that's that's the long and short of it. Um, You should just take a moment and sit down and realize in some aspects this is going to be difficult. But if I were to actually dedicate myself to trying to play this, this will be a really enjoyable experience. And I'm not talking about, like, you know, just give all of your time to it or anything like that. I'm just saying actually make an effort to try and play the game and like do some research if you needed to, if you have trouble or whatever and see what's best, you know, where to go grind for something that will take like less than an hour and you get enough souls that you like level yourself up to like fucking fucking 40 in one kill. That, that sort of like it, I don't even give a shit if you exploit. I just want you to experience the game because a whole big 
element of Souls games, in my opinion, are exploits. Because it feels like they feel a lot like old NES titles, more or less. They feel like old Castlevania games. They feel like the kind of games that you can sequence break. They feel like just old school gaming in general. Like when everything wasn't just let me hold your hand and take you where you need to go. Let me show you what you need to do. It it was all about exploration and figuring out where to go next by just playing the game. And uh, having a game that did that in 2022 is such a breath of fresh air. And having one that did it so well and that even connected with people that weren't big fans of the series, that's that says something. I fully believe that Elden Ring will be game of the year this year. And I think if it's not, there will be riots in the street. So there's that. That's that's what I feel about Elden Ring. And that that's why it's game of the year. Easy. Okay. Uh, my last one for this list is Fire Emblem Warriors: Three Hopes. Wow. Okay. Re- yeah. No, it's it's really solid. Like I don't have like I said last week when we were talking about it. I really don't have anything bad to say about this game. It's incredibly deep. Mm-hmm. Um, it's probably the deepest Muso game I've played. I said it's like they they took three houses. And just were like, well, instead of this turn-based strategy, we're just going to make a Muso gameplay instead, and then just left all the other systems intact. So it's got a lot of complexity to it. It's got a lot of interesting stuff going on. It's got the most, the largest character roster of any Muso game I've ever seen. Um, huh. It's got a huge variety of the um, different classes and stuff you can play as that all seem to have different effects. Um, there's just there's so much going on. It's just it, it just it, I've never seen any Muso game that like compares to it. Like it's just so customizable. Um then on top of that, like I said, the systems that are there from like three houses are still you still have the support system. You still have like the the day-to-day like activity points that you can spend on the kitchen or chores and things. It's there's just it's and then it's got three different stories at least that you can play through. It's got New Game Plus. Uh, and just, I don't even know. I can't even fathom how long it would take to like 100% this game. There's just incredible amount of depth with everything that's going on there. Um, there's tons of variety. Uh, it's just, I just have, like I said, I literally have nothing bad to say about this game at all. Wow. Yeah. All right. Mm hmm. I need to play it. I, 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 like I, said, I, I'm not even being like hyperbole. I think that this is the best Warriors game I've ever played. Um, like it's, it just, it just has a depth that I had not seen in any other ones. Like it just, it's not just like run around and slash things and get experience points. There's just so much depth to the systems that are built in. It's incredible. So yeah, okay. definitely recommend it. And like I said, there is a demo. Like it's, there's no reason not to play it. Check out the demo. All right. But the, mm-hmm. I'll give it a go. Yeah. All so right, are Nick, we about them? Oh, I thought I thought we were going to move over to games we were looking forward to. Well, we could do that. I don't know if Nick has anything else. No, I I don't. Okay. Now we can do games we're looking forward to. I guess Nick, you can go first with that. Uh, the first one I'm looking forward the most to actually just came out. I think this week or maybe last week. Mm-hmm. Uh, live alive, live alive. That's um, on my list also. Yeah, I have no, it. I, I haven't played, played it yet. I have not I, been able to play it yet, but I have I it. Get, I get paid Friday, so I might pick it up this Friday. But It um, is scoring incredibly high. It is. Um, I did play the free demo for it, and mm-hmm. that was really good. Did you finish so, it all? Uh, I finished one of them. Because there's like, I think there's like four or five different like paths you can go on in the demo. So I finished yeah. the first one that I started. Um, so I finished that one and I just, I really like how the game plays. Cause to me, it's funny. Cause like, it's an older game, but to me it feels like a more fleshed out idea of what they wanted to do with, um, not triangle strategy. What was the other game that they put out first? Um, Octopath Traveler. yes, mm-hmm. it Octopath definitely feels like that's what they were trying to do with, like they're trying to maybe make like a spiritual successor to live alive. Mm. Um, and they just, they, to me, it it just, it, it fell flat. And then like in the first, like, I don't know, 15 minutes of playing this, it was like, in, like a lot better. So, you I know, see. um, 
but yeah, I'm looking forward to to getting that and playing that because uh, it was really good from the little bit that I played. So yeah, go ahead, Brandon. Gets it back to you. Um, yeah, looking at other games that are coming out this year, which I'm gonna go do right now. <laughs> Because I, I can't really think of a whole lot that I'm looking forward to. Really? I got yeah. A list. Um, yeah, a lot of the ones I want to play have already released, more or less. Um, coming. I got an easy one for you. Go I on. give you a gimme. Yeah? Bayonetta 3. That is true. Bayonetta 3 is instantly, like, top of the top of the list. Mm-hmm. That is... A hundred percent. Yeah, that's my most look forward to game for right now. Easily. Damn. That's a that's a game. Yeah. It's coming out in the near future. Yeah. Fuck. Oh, uh JoJo's Bizarre Adventure All Star Battle R. I'm super looking forward to that on the PS5. That's coming out in September. I forgot about that. Oof, that's awesome. Um see if I can think of anything else. Can I cheat and say no more heroes three on a system that can actually run it? No. <laughs> you didn't finish it the first time. I don't give a fuck. That's part of the reason why I didn't finish it the first time. We've already That's talked about this. You didn't finish it the first time. I said part of the reason. Damn it. <laughs> the real reason is you're worse at Nick than finish, uh, finishing games. I'm Maybe. bad at finishing anything right now. <laughs> you're the new Nick. I'm probably worse in every way, shape, and form. Oh. So you're the new top. Don't ever fucking say that again. <laughs> I was gonna say that was aggressive. That I will fucking kill you. I will actually fucking end your life. That that made me angry. I don't, I don't even want to talk to you no more. <laughs> I, mean, uh, I don't know what else I want to play. Help me out. Help me out. I can't think. Help me okay, out. Well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you things that I'm yeah. excited for. Okay. Let's let's see some upcoming games. Uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Yeah, Super that's a game. For. Reviews are coming out. Pretty solid. I guess I watched the Digital Foundry breakdown today. It said it has definitely more solid than Xenoblade 2 was. So you got mm-hmm. that. Um, it just sounds like it's super interesting. I'm, I'm curious to see what direction they ended up taking with this. So um, so yeah, so that, that I'm really excited about. I love the last, I don't know, I guess there's three of them now prior to this. Um, because there's X as well. I think they're all they're all great games. So I'm excited to see where that one ends up going. Um Splatoon 3, super jazzed about. Oh, yeah, that's that's a good one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I bet they're gonna do like uh what do they call it before when they did like the the live play test thing? Nintendo seems to be doing them a lot more for their online oh, games. Yeah. yeah. So I'm sure we'll get like one of those uh beforehand to kind of get your like feet wet for Splatoon. Mm-hmm. Um, and I really hope that they build on like the single player stuff like they did with the Octo expansion because um, that was a blast. So I really think that that game has a lot of potential and it's just it's fun. It's one of the few multiplayer games that I just kind of like just enjoy. Like it's not mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I don't feel like a shit bag when I'm playing that game, which is always nice because um, I feel like it's just it's it is competitive, but it's well rounded and it's not super punishing. Okay. So um at least that's how i feel about splatoon yeah so. actually it's funny because my girlfriend started playing splatoon 2 and like she i mean she, she's not as much of a gamer i guess as i am or at least it was for a little bit uh-huh. um and she like kind of just picked it right up and started playing it really enjoying it so like if that that kind of i feel like that kind of hammers in the point that you just made yeah um let's see what else Oh, um, I'm looking through some stuff. I now have a, I now have some things that that you're definitely not going to mention that I'm interested in. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> um, what other ones are they going to say? Mario plus Rabbids? Yeah. Whatever the new one's called. I oh, Sparks of out. Hope. Yes. Mm-hmm. Sparks of Hope looks very good. Yeah, it I, does. It seems like they added a lot into the new things. Um, I guess Bowser's playable in this one, so that should be interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm really torn on if I just want to like dive in for the gold edition right away or not. Mm. Um, I probably will. I probably yeah. Will. I mean, I, I feel like the last one was decent enough that I'm just like, yeah. oh, it will end up being worth it. So, um, yeah. So I, I'm very excited for that. Um, oh, there was other stuff. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. 
Mm. I'm excited about those. I know we just kind of talked about it earlier in the episode with Legends, um, but I'm really hoping that a lot of those like mechanics end up going through. Um, but it does seem like they're at least trying a bunch of new things with it being like non-linear open world. So um, I think at least that will make it pretty interesting. Like I said before, like the game has been like hemorrhaging leaks lately. Um, not really sure where from, but a lot more is known about this game than probably should be at this point. Yes. Uh, so th- I think that's pretty interesting. Um, to the point where it was, if you've been following like the Pokemon leaks, there's like one real famous leaker that likes to kind of like trickle things out in like riddles. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's kind of been like an asshole. And when all this stuff leaked out, he just kind of had like a meltdown and was like, I quit. I'm not leaking anything anymore. This is no fun. And um, I think most people consider that a win. So, yeah, so I don't, I don't know. I'm really interested to see. And like I said, it, it sounds like a bunch of at least some of the nice quality life stuff from Arceus will come out with that. That's so, good. Yeah. Uh, is there... Hey, I'll, 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 uh, I'll take a step in here and give some that I know 110% will not be mentioned by you. Okay. Uh, Gundam Evolution. It's oh, the free to play first person, game. first person Gundam oh, yeah. game. The the first person shooter Gundam game. It looks so good. It actually does look very good. I watched. Uh, well, you probably know who this is. I watched Penguin Zero or oh yeah, Char- Zero. Or, or Critical. And I watched him yeah. stream it, and it looked like so much fun. And they were actually like legitimately having fun playing it. I was like, this looks fucking awesome. <laughs> Uh, I guess the only thing that will come like at the end of that is like, what's the monetization going to be like since it's free to play? But yeah. that that game looks really good. It looks really. Who's it being good. made slash published by? Uh, Namco Bandai, isn't it? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, Bandai Namco. Okay. Yeah. Um. So it's. I mean, it looks awesome. Um. Another game that I know is not going to be mentioned by anyone else, but I am interested in is Roller Drome, which is coming out August sixteenth, and I also believe is part of PS Premium. I don't exactly know if it's just a trial or if it's the full game. Uh, Roller Drome is that game they showed off during one of the PlayStation events, where it's like super cell shaded, and it's like a combination of Jet Set Radio and um and like Twisted Metal. Where like mm-hmm. you're shooting like roller while rollerblading. It looked really, really good. Um a few other things I know won't be mentioned by either of you at all is Metal Hellsinger. Oh, yeah. Metal Hellsinger is fucking excellent. I played the demo and that is one of the best games I played this year, and I don't even have it yet. <laughs> And Good then, um, yeah, I mean, like, we got the Persona collection announced for, you know, Game Pass, so that's that's exciting as well. I get to play Persona on PC, finally. That's super cool. Yeah, and I'm excited for that for Switch mm-hmm. as well. Yeah, Although you get I... you get to finally play Persona. Yeah. Although only only five is coming out this year. I know, I know. Yeah, but it's, I mean, it's... It's still being four, able to play... I never turned it on. So You own four? I own four on this, the Vita. Vita? Yeah. It but it's I will buy good. it again. Yeah. Well, I know. That's why I bought it. Because you're like, oh, it's excellent. And it was on sale. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, fuck yeah, I'll buy this. Three is my and favorite. Then... I'm just, I'm excited to play three again. I don't care if it's the PSP one. I don't give a shit. It's just, it's Persona 3. I'm excited. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Super reasonable. Um, I guess I could share a few that I'm looking forward to. There's a really low hanging fruit. I'm surprised no one's gone for it. Yeah, yet. no, bet... there actually is some. I haven't gone for Pokemon yeah. yet, if that's what you wanted to say. No, yeah. I said Pokemon, but yeah. No, there's another um, one. I'm, I bet Nick's going to go for it. God of War? Yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah, that's the War. other one. Yep, yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm going to actually, because God of War doesn't need to be like kind of pumped up anymore because it's it's a huge game. So um, some of the other ones I'm looking forward to. Uh, actually, one's coming out, I think, fairly soon. Uh, next month. Uh, Cult of the Lamb. That was another one I was going to list. That game looks really it, fucking fun. It does, it does. And it's Devolver Digital, so like yes, you can't go wrong there. So, like, yeah, no. Like, when we first saw the trailer during their not E3 showcase, mm-hmm. whatever they're calling it these days, um, I thought it was really good. I don't know if that other game is coming out this year that they also showed off Super... Or is it Plucky's Tale, or whatever the fuck it was called? Um, uh, I don't. I think that's like super what? 
the plucky the plucky squire oh yeah that's next year the yeah, so that's next plucky year. squire whatever the fuck it was called um, i don't even remember the name but of yeah it. no uh, yeah it's the plucky squire but uh, no cult of the lamb looks very very good um as well as i'm going through like the list of the things that i was writing down and now i can't mm-hmm. find uh what i was looking for it said mario and rabbits that's a big one um oh, there was another game that was coming out this year but then they delayed it but uh sea of stars but um uh, also very much so looking forward to the callista protocol yeah that's uh, that's in oh, december yeah. i didn't realize I'm, that i thought that I'm was interested. january I'm interested to see which game does better, the Callista Protocol or uh, the Dead Space Dead remake. Space remake? Which, I, is that I, this I honestly year too? Think, no, it's not. No, that's next year. It's like March. I honestly think Callista will be better than the Dead Space remake. It's very I agree possible. too. Yeah, it's very possible. Um, which would be funny. And also, like, there's a part of me that wants it to be better than Dead Space, just so that the OG creator of Dead Space can be like, yes, yeah, suck it, nerds. <laughs> uh, I, you know, there's one, there's another one. I don't know if anyone's actually going to pick this, but Scorn, pretty. Oh, yeah, I, Scorn, that I mean, really interesting. That comes I'll, out October. I'll most likely play it just because it's free. It, spooky month, and it's on Game Pass. Yeah, yes, it is spooky month. Yeah, spooky month. So, um, you know, it does look quite, quite, quite good. Why, why don't we flip the script for a second and talk about what games we think will actually be like absolute shit? <laughs> I think it would be really funny. Okay. I, I mean, you can't. I don't have any off the top of my head, at least not that I can think of. Do you have um, any, uh, Nick? Yes. I have two, at least. What, what are yours? Um, hold on. Is that coming out this year? Actually, I guess there's maybe a handful that I think are going to be absolute fucking ass. All right, let's, let's um, hear them. Hot take, Last of Us Part 1. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think... It, I don't think it's going to be shit, but I don't think it's going to be worth the price tag, or even, yeah. like worth having been created in yeah, the first place. The biggest yeah. issue with that. Yeah. Um what else? Uh I feel like Gotham Knights is gonna be booty cheeks. That is on my list of trash. I feel like Gotham Knights will be absolute garbage. That's probably yeah. my number two like this is probably gonna be shit. Um most I think, game. I feel like Dragon Ball the Breakers has a lot of potential to be not be good. But then I mean, it will also probably be carried by the Dragon Ball fandom, so it'll probably be like moderate at best. Yeah, I think like there's a lot of meme potential there also <laughs> for how bad Correct. it could be. Correct. Um, there's one that I kind of hopes fails, and then there's one that I'm scared that it's going to fail because I want it to be good. Mm-hmm. Um, the one that I want to fail would be Overwatch Two. Okay. Um, the one that I'm scared of is um marvel's midnight suns okay all right you because still haven't named my number one most i i want that be shit game <laughs> i want that to be good mm-hmm. i really do um but i mean i feel like marvel games have been very hit and miss as of late uh, um because the like the avengers marvel game that released? well the avengers game was trash and then mm-hmm. they came out with guardians of the galaxy and like Which that was, was really surprisingly good. very good mm-hmm um so like i feel like this is gonna go one of two ways it's either gonna be very very good or very very meh yeah um so i hope that's good because i like i i like that whole idea of the midnight suns and like it's really cool to see them kind of flesh it out in this kind of a way Mm -hmm. um but yeah it's it's i'm nervous about that okay so can you guess what my like i'm almost positive this will be ass game is uh Mm -hmm. let me has it, it hasn't come out yet, right? So anything nope. from net from from basically hmm. next month onwards. Let me just. Oh, I already know what it is. What is it? Fucking uh, Saints Row. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, I think Saints Row is going to be absolutely. I thought too ass. hard about that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's it's Saints Row. Saints Row is going to be absolute trash. Um, I'm looking, I'm looking. I agree with you on Overwatch too. I I hope that it's just meh. Oh, you stuff. know what? Yeah. Worst game of the year, Halo, Hello Neighbor 2. That apparently releases this year. Oh, yeah, that is a thing that's happening. I'm not sure why, but yeah. yeah. I guess enough people bought the first one. I think you mean enough children bought the first one? I don't know. I don't know who bought it. Might be children. 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 Yeah. I didn't see the sales numbers. It was Mommy's credit card level of sales numbers. Probably. I would assume so. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, what else? 
Um, um, a game that I'm surprised that actually Mike didn't talk about yet, because I thought you would have gotten day one, was um, Xenoblade. Didn't he mention that? I did say Xenoblade. Uh, but I think that was you, the first thing played? he mentioned. Was it? Yeah. Xenoblade 3? Yeah. It's Xenoblade not out yet. Ignoring you. It, it is. Just, it, no, it's not. No, no it's, it's the not. 29th. Huh? I thought it was getting reviews. It is. Uh, yeah, it's, it it's reviews, but it comes out oh, Friday. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't paying attention. I know. So good. As it was. <laughs> yeah, no, it comes out on Friday. So it's, it's, it's in that weird, like, limbo state. Mm-hmm. Yes. And apparently it, it's leaked already. So it's like there's tons of oh, stuff cool. out there already. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, I could see how you would think that it's out already. But yeah, it's still mm-hmm. got a couple more days. That's fair. Yeah. Okay, so this is, now that I know this exists, this is probably the lowest of low-hanging fruit for worst game of the year, but it will definitely end up being up there, if not the worst game of the year. You remember the 13 remake? Oh, yeah, how bad it was? Switch. It's coming to Switch. Very good. So it's just like, hey, let's nab worst game of the year twice in a row, I guess. Fuck it, no. I mean, why not? Some people sure. love those accolades. It's I'm I'm excited for yeah. the the Resident Evil Village expansion. That, that there, that's what I want. That's what I want. Oh, that's yeah. another game I want. I don't think it'll be booty cheeks. I think that'll actually be really good. It should be. It'll definitely make me play through the game again in third person this time. Why not? It's nice that they had the option there. I think that's pretty cool, actually. Yep. Yeah. Do you guys yep. have anything else? Um, think, is there anything else? There's a couple of games that have yet to have release dates this year. Um, uh-huh. I don't know. I think this was actually confirmed for next year at this point. I, I, this list that I'm going off of might not be updated. Um, do you guys know if they confirmed a release year for Atomic Heart? Uh, I don't even know what that is. I think it's Game Pass this like December or possibly the end, the beginning of next year. All right. That's... So it looks like the last thing we got was in February. It says fall 2022. Yeah. Um, so Atomic Heart is like a... I don't want to say Fallout ish, but it's like a post apocalyptic based RPG. Oh um, no no no! I know what game you're talking about now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I've actually that that's been on my radar for a couple of years now. So okay. if it comes out this year, I'll be very happy because I've been waiting to play it. So um, as for anything else, I don't know. I mean, Pokemon. We already said Pokemon Violet and Scarlet, but um, yeah, I don't know. Nothing, nothing else that really kind of comes to mind at this point so okay yeah but you guys ready to wrap up then what yeah yeah I'm, yeah I'm yeah, yeah i'm good okay all right well then thank you everyone for listening to us tonight don't forget you can find us on itunes stitcher google amazon wherever you guys get your podcasts we also have a website game-crunch.com if you want to reach out to us we have facebook twitter you can send us email gamecrunchcast at gmail.com Brandon. Hello. Any final thoughts? Uh no, nothing. Okay. Nick? Uh nope. Okay. Well, with that said, my name is Mike Anastasia. You can find me online. I'm Clash Penguin on Twitter or your favorite gaming console. And until next week, game on. Games. Games. Videos. I think let me see. I think I'm good to. I, I got no got some trips coming up, but most of the time I'm back on those Mondays, so I should be fine as well. So not taking any any days of work off. 
No, I am. I just I I take mon like if I co go on a trip, like I'll take like a Monday off afterwards. But like like I'll I'll be like back at home basically. Oh, I see like a day after coming back to kind of like D decompress you know, from the vacation before yeah have a have network. a vacation from the vacation if if that makes <laughs> sense you got it it's horrible yeah. to go straight from vacation to work oh yeah there's nothing worse i need uh, that like day coming back to reality <laughs>